Good day and welcome to my channel. I'm JD with Watch My Service. Anyway, I'm back today. I'm red today. All all red. Uh, I got rid of the black. It was a recommendation from my wife who said, look, your color looks really crappy. Put on a red shirt. Decent color. Show some respect. Show some respect out there. Um, today we're going to be working on this beautiful ball pocket watch. I brought up uh, the photo I had from before on the uh, left hand side of the ball watch company. Um, the coolest thing here is that, uh, is that the saying on the ball came from the ball watch company when someone's on the ball which means they're on time and they're on mark and they're smart and other things so that's on the ball so that's a kind of cool little bit of history there trivia so in the back that's the ball watch company there and as I said before this particular watch that I'm going to be disassembling today and assessing is uh, a Waltham made ball watch. So I don't think Ball manufactured any watches. Um, I think this dude, uh, Web C Ball, established the standards for the, uh, for the watches but didn't actually build any watches. But they put a, the Ball, uh, the ball uh, name, trademark, whatever you want to call it, on that watch. So you knew that it was a, an American standardized railroad watch which is kind of cool so so that was a uh, one way of doing it so the railroad watches again were made because of the awful crash of two trains because some engineer uh, was off by five minutes and his watch it had stopped for five minutes and and he was like oh my god and then um, these watches are these trains the watches collided yeah no the trains collided and <clears throat> and caused, uh, I guess there was a lot of deaths. You have to look that one up and see what that, uh, that the history of that collision is. Uh, but that's how the railroad watches all started, um, and they're the most sought after uh, pocket watches. This particular watch here, the Ball watch, is a beautiful watch. It's in the hunter position, which means at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is in this position. I'm not going to say what time. <laughs> I usually screw that up. Anyway, it's in this position. Um, and to, to, it, with respect to the position of the uh, stem or the crown, right, or the pendant. Uh, so that's, this is a hunter position. So you can have a watch that doesn't have a flip-up uh, case top here that is also in the hunter position. So, so this is a ball watch. I made a, a quick uh, video on it earlier. Um, I let it run down. It, it had a I put a little bit of power on it, let it run down. That way I can check check the uh, pallet fork and see where the pallet fork is with respect to the banking pins to see if I've got any um, any uh, issue with bead error right off the spot. So if there's a bead error issue, I'll be able to see that right away by looking at the, uh, the watch, um, the escapement and watch uh, the pallet fork and the balance at rest um, and see if the impulse jewel is in the center of the banking pins. If it is, then I've got no real bead error issues. Uh, but I'm going to strip this down and have a look at it. Um, this is again is one of Bori's watches that I'm that I'm working on uh, and getting this back into as good a condition as I can get it in. Uh, the last one I, I, I there's two back coming back to him right now, which I got uh, running I think really really well. Um, and in this uh, assessment, I'm going to be looking at the the jewels, the individual jewels to make sure that uh, there's no cracks, abrasions on the jewels themselves that might uh, slow the watch down. <clears throat> it's all about friction when you're doing, when you're trying to get a watch running uh, to perfection. It's about power and friction. So uh, if you've got any problems with the jewels, if you've got any problems with the pivots, if you have things rubbing, like the balance rubbing against the center wheel, uh, which I've had in the past just because it's off some, then there's friction, 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 friction. So you got to check the upper and lower jewels on the pocket watch to make sure there's no problems with those jewels that will result in, in friction that will slow the watch down. And if the watch has got friction issues and it's slowed down, then you're going to have issues trying to regulate that watch because it won't, won't regulate uh, very well. Also in different positions when you have it, uh, say, face up or face down, um, and then the watch, the gears with the, with the pivots are going through the jewels, and the actual arbor or the the, uh, the shaft of the gear is touching that watch uh, jewel as you flip it the other way. Um, so whichever way it is, uh, face up, face down, uh, there may be too much um, end play, um, which which are end shake, which uh, would cause more more friction, allow that thing to dr ride down more. 
Um, so you want to reduce as much friction as possible, um, and uh, <coughs> and which means I've got to examine all the jewels, I've got to examine all of the parts, the wheels, every part of this watch, uh, and uh, build it back up again, and make sure it's properly oiled and not and not too oiled. You can put too much oil in a watch will attract dust. Um, it'll also uh, allow the oil to migrate to places you don't want the oil to go to, like the hairspring. So if the hairspring gets oiled, the hairspring won't operate properly. So you need to, to make sure there's just enough oil to support lubrication of the, of the jewels and thus lubricating the pivots going through the jewels, um, but not too much oil so, such that the oil will migrate um, and go to other places in the watch. So, so that's the a little, little uh, blurb on oiling. And I, I've got other videos on oiling that you may want to look up. Just look up on my channel and watch oiling, and I'll give you some inf more information. So, and I too am learning all the time. Um, I'm on the Watch Repair Talk blog, which is an excellent blog uh, for just sharing uh, stories and getting help and other things. So go to WatchRepairTalk.com, and this is Mark's uh, website, I believe. Uh, you'll go there and you'll see he's one of the uh, adjudicators or something of the adjudicators. Is that the right word? Hmm. Anyway. And there's also a, a couple of other guys that uh, that run that site, and um, I put I put up questions and I put up help and everything else on that site too. So, so I'm gonna break this uh, watch down, this ball watch. It does look like it's a beautiful a beautiful piece. It's got the 24 hour uh, numbers on the inside, which is kind of cool. Someone told me that that was Canadian, because uh, I don't know if the Americans they go up to 22 hours, I think. So they have the 22 hour clock, and we have the 24 hour clock. And that was the comic. Uh, that was the comic pause right there. So, hope you didn't believe that. So, <laughs> so, <clears throat> and also on the inside of this thing, the, uh, the it goes around like this, and there's an 18 in the middle of the of the sunken uh, seconds hand. So the secondary dial there is on the bottom, and it's a it's a it's not a double sunk dial. It's a single sunk dial, I guess. So, unless this is the second one, it's a double sunk dial. So one of them's like this. This one sunk a little lower. So it's a, a very beautiful, very uh, high-end dial as well. So this is a piece, a very collectible piece. Um, and I think that uh, I really have to take my time in, in working on this watch. One thing that's kind of weird on this watch, and I'm just looking at it right now. Get out my pointer tweezers so I can point at it, is that this is the clip that's used when you close the case and you press this down. And that moves inward just ever so slightly. And as I move that clip, I see the dial moving just a bit. So I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe the dial screws are, are loose. Also, I can see that this, this hook or this clip here is not absolutely centered here with the stem, with the pennant and stem. So this, this looks slightly off. There's maybe nothing I can do about that, but it's kind of weird. So uh, I'll have a look at that too. Uh, it is weird that when I press this in, that that the uh, movement moves. I don't like that at all, which might mean that the movement's just not secure in the case um, or that something's off just a bit. So that's just the first thing I'm seeing on this watch. Other than that, there's nothing more that I can see. Let me just flip this thing over and have a look at the other side. All right, there's the other side. So there we go there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous watch. So ball watch, it's a whole lot of jewels. I did a review on that uh, a couple of videos ago though. And um, let me just look, press this button again and see if it's, when I move the clip, what happens to the movement. Yeah, it's moving ever so slightly, which means these screws aren't in tight. So you shouldn't have that, right? It just doesn't, uh, yeah, it's rotating just a bit inside the case. I'm sure it's not damaging anything, but. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do with this watch is actually look at the alignment, right, from... You know, the impulse dual pallet fork and the mouth of the pallet fork is on this side. And I'll make sure that that's completely aligned, right? So that if this is completely aligned, then the pallet fork, the arm of the pallet fork is going to be between the banking twin, the banking pins. I almost said banking twins. Man, it's, it's early. It's the morning, okay? It's the morning. And it's like a Saturday. So, so the banking pits would be one, two there, and then I look down the center of that to see where that arm is. And if it's generally in the center of that, then I'm good. If it's off to one side too much, then I may have an issue. But when I strip this down, um, I'll look at any issues we have here, and then I'll look at the, um, I'll make sure that there's no issue with the impulse jewel itself, that it's not at an angle, 
that might cause an issue and make sure that the shellac is holding that impulse jewel in place because I don't want to reassemble all of this and then start it up and find out I've got a loose impulse jewel issue so that would require re the impulse jewel so on the onto the roller table which is a whole other job um, so that's good um, so let's just uh, strip this watch down and, and uh, have a look at it so I did say that this watch had a whole lot of jewels a whole lot of jewels so <laughs> I just had to throw that in. Alrighty then, so here we have the microscope view of the uh, jewels of the ball pocket watch. So, And what I'm going to do is zoom in on each one of these jewels to make sure there's no cracks, abrasions, and this sort of stuff going on. Alright, there's the uh, center wheel jewel. So that's a pretty good shot of it. And I added another camera just so you can see the angle here that I've got with the uh, pocket watch. And um, as I can, as I look into the uh, microscope here with the other eyepiece, I can see there's really no issues with the center wheel jewel. I zoom in a bit, and you can basically go pretty, pretty, uh, pretty close to the jewel to see what's going on here. In this case here, there's, it looks like there's nothing wrong with this this jewel. It looks like it's in really good shape. So we'll just move on to the next jewel. I'm going to let this the camera slide. Or leave the camera on as I move it over to the next jewel to see if this uh, actually works. So there we go. So that was the center wheel there. I'm pretty sure, yeah. And then I've got the next jewel here. And this would be the intermediate wheel. So it's, uh, again, looking like it's in pretty darn good condition. Uh, and I'll just see if I can... It's, uh, focus that a bit and it doesn't look like there's any problems with that that jewel in that particular so that jewel is a good jewel and then it'll slide over to the uh, seconds hand jewel so there's a seconds hand jewel there and we have no issue with this, this are, these are all the upper jewels of course because you've got to do the other jewels as well to make sure there's nothing there but I'll have to disassemble the watch and look at that to see if I can uh, see if there's any issue. So that's the seconds, uh, seconds hand jewel or the fourth, one, two, three, fourth wheel. So it's the fourth wheel jewel, second hand jewel. And then there's the jewel for the escapement here. And I could see a little hair there as, as if you look closely, you can see a little hair there. It's amazing what you can see under a microscope. So this ensures that you get, uh, you know, as close as you can get, you can see any problems this way. Um, any other way really doesn't doesn't do it. So, so this is a good way of examining each one of the jewels. In this case here, this jewel is also uh, good and there's no issue. And then I can look deep down into the uh, into this piece and look at the jewel that's used for the uh, the pallet fork. So I just line that up like this, and then I'm gonna focus that focus this jewel in and as I focus it in here I can see no issue here at all either so I always have a look too because you can see through the cap jewel you can actually see the uh, the jewel that's used for the balance staff so <clears throat> on the balance bridge you have this is the cap jewel and you can zoom in and you can actually see the pivot through there if I can stop it right there and you can actually see that pivot that little dot in the center is the pivot so that's that's and the capsule looks fine but i've got to take that off to look at it again so now i'm going to try to align up the the uh, this microscope so you can actually see the pallet fork arm and where it sits in between the banking pins so give me a second here while i line this up so you can kind of see it there you can kind of see the shade of the pallet fork arm in the middle and if you look closely on the left hand side 
um, I'm not sure how, how to describe this, but you can see the um, on the left hand side you can see one of the banking pins on the right hand side you can see the other banking pins they're kind of brass colored and I don't know if I can get that any clearer so if I do this you can see it a bit better I guess there we go that's not too bad there and you can see that the arm of the pallet fork is directly in this or right in the center between those two banking pins and if I just move this just a bit here uh, can I move that balance just a bit? Yeah, it's hard to do. So you can see that that's right in the middle um, of the two banking pins. Uh, so that's that's good. Uh, I'll just see if I can poke it with the... Uh... There we go. So you can see that moving over to one side and then moving over to the other side. There it's moving there and so that's directly in the center of the banking pin so that's successful um, and I can see it much better uh, looking through the microscope than I can recording it here so it's very very hard to record and this is a close-up of the branding that's on the watch or the label on the watch and there's two R's as you can see I can't get any further back from here um, but there's the two R's uh, which is railroad so that says railroad and that's a uh, it's inlaid and it's a uh, brass, I believe, um, and it's looking uh, pretty good. It's a, it's a nice, nice addition, but as you can see, when you go really close up with these little parts of the watch, they look kind of dirty and mangled and stuff, but as you look at it from a distance, it looks fine. So uh, even the abrasions on the, on the uh, watch, on the, uh, on the nickel, as you can look there where it says trade, that's for trademark. The other side it says mark, but you can see all the scratches there. So the question is, are some of these scratches from the machining of the plate? Or are these scratches from uh, work and time? I, I believe they're scratches from the machining of the plate. But if, if I go over to the screw here, that's the case screw. And I look in the side of the case screw, I see all kinds of scratches on the side of the case screw, which would be from the watchmaker actually uh, working on that watch and causing the issues, right? And if I press the button in as I did before, and you can see that case screw perhaps move around, right? Let's see if I can do that, see that? So that case screw is not touching the, the edge or the, uh, the rim of the case. So it's not really holding the case, the uh, yeah, watch movement in place because it's not touching that. I'm just pressing down on the crown here and so you can really get a close-up view of that as well. Um, is there anything else I want to look at? So uh, I don't think there's much more, just some scratches here um, and we'll have a look at the balance later. But the good news is, let me get over here for the fast and slow. The good news here is that uh, is that the bead error should be good because the, there's no issue there at all. And also under the microscope you can look at the hinges and see if there's any issue with, with hinges. And those are the back hinges of the pocket watch. That's pretty close. That's the, the hinge there. So if I move this, get my hand out of the way here. Uh, yeah, that's blocking the light here. But I can move that hinge and you'll see, um, yeah, that doesn't work too well. Anyway, uh, you can look at the hinges as well. and other parts of the uh, pocket watch under the microscope to make sure there's no issue there as well so and I do look at the pivots on the pocket watch and this watch looks pretty clean I'm looking at the gears here of the uh, this is the center wheel so these are the gears in the center wheel and you really don't see much any dirt here of, of, of any great magnitude I actually can't see any dirt at all so this is all good news so this uh, watch Bori said the watch was cleaned so I'll have a look at it when I disassemble it to make sure that uh, I agree with them. Because I don't, if it's clean, uh, there's probably not much use in cleaning it twice, but I'll have a look at it anyway. Uh, some of the components I may want to clean again, uh, but these in general you don't want to, you don't need to be risking anything by cleaning it twice if it's if it's fine. So there's, and there's again looking at the watch at an angle, um, and again looking at uh, whether that banking pin is, is uh, or whether the banking pins and the pallet fork are dead center. So, 
and that's actually one of the pallet fork jewels there that we're looking at so that's a jewel in the pallet fork and you see how that jewel is put in place it's very very little bit of shellac that's used to put that jewel on the pallet fork in place and if I scoot over this way you might be able to see the other jewel or not oh there's the other jewel there so and I'll just zoom out a bit and you can see the other jewel and the balance is just vibrating ever so slightly right now because I'm putting a little bit of movement on it and as I showed you before that's the uh, that's the jewel uh, on the top of the pallet fork and a close-up of that as well and a little tiny bit of dirt there see that just a bit of dirt and I zoomed in before to look look down deep into the watch to see where that pallet fork was was resting between the balance pins so it's all good anyway that's enough of this and let's get into disassembly of this watch all right I'm going to start this video with a cup of decaffeinated coffee so I don't shake all right let's get to work here let's move my keyboard out of the way and today I'm wiring my my Russian Vostok Amphibia Reef watch. Look at that baby. It's really nice actually. And I've got to replace the little tiny jewel that was on the top there because when it came it didn't have this jewel. Probably why it was on sale. But I might put a red ruby in there which would be really nice. So so here we go. Here's the pocket watch. I've uh, The power is down on the watch so I don't have to deal with that issue here. Um, so what I need to do, what I need to do is, is remove the watch from the case. I've got a toothpick here so I can use this toothpick to, to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So let's just close the lid on this first. Um, I can see some fingerprints on here. I don't believe I put those prints on. Just, just saying. Just saying. So there we go. So there it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watch. So I want to remove the, um, the case here first so I need to get one of my case or my this is the the face rim or whatever it's called that keeps the uh, the crystal on the top um, and I think I think that is a is a mineral crystal as well a glass mineral something like that um, and I'm just gonna pop this pop this crystal open nice and carefully here and just wedge that in nicely and then that should pop in and I just want to make sure that I don't mar any of this watch uh, use my fingernail here so I don't leave any fingerprints and there's the crystal I just put that aside for now uh, I need to make sure that everything is out of the way as they say so put that aside for now and I've got to move the hands into position now for uh, removing the hands I can remove the second hand right away, but uh, I want to move those hands over to the 9 o'clock hour to get them out of the way and then put my hand pliers in there and right around that is good. It's not ticking so I don't have to worry about that and I got to get my hand hand pliers out and or hand devices out to pop those hands up. Um, I had the new hand devices that are a lot wider, but these ones here, uh, which give you a, a wider grip on the whole thing, and maybe these are better for doing this, I'm not sure, but I need to put, uh, put a little bit of a thing on there first. Uh, the camera angle's a bit wrong here, uh, so, but I don't want to move the camera right now because it's perfect for everything else. Now, just because I'm super anal retentive, I bought myself some Swiss-made Bergeron, Bergeron um, hand protectors. And these are used to protect the, uh, the hand as you're putting this down. Eh? So, but I don't want to ruin that second hand, so let's just get that second hand off first. And uh, be very careful about this. See if I can just move this off very easily and without having to worry about this too much. I don't want to. I don't want to be in the position where that second hand is in the way where I'm trying to move the hands, right? So let's just do that quickly, as quickly as I can do it. Seems like it doesn't want to do it quickly, right? This isn't really tight enough in here to do this with the second hand, so I'm going to just back off a bit and grab a piece of yellow paper that I had. See if I had, still have this. 
little teeny weeny piece of yellow sticky and I just kind of carved a, a v-slot into it I think I did there's the yellow sticky paper so all you do is take some scissors you do this really quickly here and just carve a very slight v-slot into this like that and like that there's the v-slot there and then I just want to cut this off right around there get rid of the leftovers scissors go away and then grab this paper if I wasn't recording these videos as, as, as uh, my friend Bori knows that it would take a lot less time but he does enjoy the videos I think um, and it does help people so I like helping people in watchmaking um, a lot of people helped me when I started so I think I owe them uh, and when you're, you're working on the watch face don't use your screwdrivers in here use a use a, 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 a toothpick so it won't accidentally mar the face so there we have it set up there like this and I've got to move this around here because I don't want this to get in the way uh, but very carefully I want to remove that second hand by getting the uh, getting this underneath and just lifting it up like that so there's a second hand and you don't want to be very careful with this because uh, you do not just move that way over here you do not want to uh, remove that, that particular that, that second hand um, uh, and bend the the pivot on the end because the, the pivot is a long arm get this out of the way here so I can grab it with my tweezers and not touch the face there we go and I just put that up in my bench here I've got another area I got a huge wall unit full of equipment so I just put that up where the wall unit is and now maybe I can slide this in uh, there we go I'll slide this into place here to remove the hands here like so is that in place I think it is I'm not sure I'm not quite sure and I got to leave enough real estate to be able to use these hand pliers the ply or priors priors pliers so the hands would this would go underneath like this this seems pretty thick though seems like these things are pretty thick but yeah it worked really well so what this does is give me a little bit more leverage and I bought I purchased these uh, about three months ago I think and online and they're very very nice they're high quality um, and when you're working on a high quality watch you want high quality tools and just, just grab these hands by the rim don't want to grab them by the arm of the hand because again potential of, of uh, bending the arm or causing issues there so you want to be super careful there so super care super califragilistic XBL careful this thing does not want to be able to be grabbed easily. There we go. And I put that up in my up my wall unit where all the wonderful stuff is. Oh. And then push this in. Uh, use the back of my fingernail thumbnail when I push this in. This is how I always do it. I keep this thumbnail a little bit long so I can so I can accommodate watch work. So I can close this now and open up the back again. It's great for actually opening up the. Uh, the dust cover and the case and all that wonderful stuff and like I said before you get your tools out of the way I keep telling people that and they keep doing it <laughs> or not doing it so I get the tools out of the way that I don't need um, and keep the tools in the way that I do need so that way you don't crush parts so you can actually damage parts on a watch if you uh, if you have the tools in the way while you're working on the watch so it's so I'm going to take the case screws out. I've got my number 58 watch movement holder here, which is, a, as I said before, the world's best watch movement holder. I may shine this up a bit more and get rid of all the scratches. That would be pretty cool. So that's, I'll do that when I've got absolutely zero to do, right? Absolutely nothing to do. So let's open that up just a bit to make sure that it's wide enough to fit the movement. That way I don't have to dick around with it too much. So there's a, a word, eh? So these look like they're tight, but they're not snugging in the movement, which is kind of odd. So they're uh, they're tight, but not working. So I'll just remove the uh, screws here. And like I've 
said a million times, the way to look ticks, and then you can pull them out. I use brass tweezers, by the way, because they're soft and they're easier to grip screws with and they're non-magnetic and I don't know there's a million different good things about brass tweezers uh, plus they uh, they won't scratch the movement so there's less chance of them marring the movement though, with the brass so so let's put this out of the way I'm gonna put this in a watch holder after so that's like that so that's good now this is gonna want to fall out right because it's got nothing holding it so everything is kind of in place here so just take my fingers and put them on the outside like that and just let the watch movement fall out into my hand like so and as I've said a million times the first thing I want to do is move that escapement out of the way so let's just take the case and move the case out of the way uh, my desk is pretty good it's like a wooden wooden arbright desk or whatever that material is um, so and I want to put the, uh, I want to move, I want to remove this, but I don't want to hurt the face at all. So I'm going to take the, um, take the face off while I've got the movement in my hands and remove the, um, the screws that retain the, uh, the, uh, what are they called? Oh, oh, I got to say the word again, the jobby doohickeys for the face. The jobby doohickeys. So I don't have to loosen these a lot. I just don't want to lose them. So I'll keep my fingers away from the balance as I'm doing this and just loosen this back a bit. And watch where my fingers are all the time so they're not near that balance. Uh, and actually there looks like there's a screw missing here. So one of the screws is not there. And that I can find a screw for that later. I'll, I'll look in my one gajillion screws and see if I can find one. And uh, of course I just touched the balance just a bit with my hand there just a tad but I want to remove the face come on face you know you want to be removed so you just put your screwdriver in like that and it should wedge the face up just a bit this is a beautiful face so you really want to take your time doing this you do not want to to have an issue with this face so I'm going to take my time take my time I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of camera work there so I just get my screwdriver in like that and see if I can wedge it in. There we go. That's good. I'll use my other hand. Sorry about that. But I have to do that. So just wedge that in like that. Like this. Uh, I'm maintaining, trying to maintain the gap. Uh, I do have these wonderful fingernails that really help. And my thumbnail on the other side. And look at how that fingernail and thumbnail action actually helps incredibly when I'm doing this work. So there's the face, and as you can see, one of the dial feet is missing. So can I repair that? That's the question. So there's a dial foot here that's broken. Um, it does not exist. I'll look in, in the watch movement itself to see if the dial foot is still in there. Because that'll ca that's what caused this face to be moving, or the watch to be moving when it was put in place. So somebody did that somebody tightened this face down too much and ruined the dial feet now as my friend Bori knows that's going to bug me if i put this watch together and i don't put a new dial foot in there that's going to bug the crap out of me so but i don't have don't know if i've ever put a new dial foot in uh, and that makes me a little nervous so i take out all the gears that can fall out so that they're not part of the problem I'll remove the cannon pinion after I remove the balance. I want to get that balance out of there and safe, right? So just push this in a bit here, like that, and then put that down like this. And I also, when I put this in the number 58 holder, I also want to make sure that the lever for the lever set mechanism over here is not being squished by the bat by this particular movement holder so if i put it in like this um, i can see it's on the side uh, i want the balance to be free and i'm looking at that little lever to make sure that the lever is not in the way actually i think it's fine where it is i just don't want it to squish the lever well i'm gonna have to move it over a bit 
because I do not want that lever getting squished. There we go, right on the edge. It's kind of a choice here. You just have to get that balance the heck out of there. So, and let me tighten that up a bit. And I gotta go and refocus the camera. Refocus the camera. And because it's at an angle, the, the closer part here gets uh, more attention than the further part. So let me stop and restart my video so I don't have audio issues. All right, I just tested my video and everything's good. I remember I was recording a, a, a watch uh, servicing video a little while back, and at the end of it, I realized that that it wasn't recording, which pissed me off big time. So anyway, let's just take out this balance. Um, so I'm gonna loosen the screw here, and again, this looks like Hercules put that screw in. Uh, and just to hold everything in place, when you're removing the screw from the from the top here, from the balance uh, balance cock, you've got to make sure that it doesn't ride up and rattle on that pivot, because it'll just pop around. So just have, take a toothpick and hold it down, like that, and that'll keep that out of the way. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my super duper balance holder, the super duper balance holder. So. This is the one I'm going to use today. I'm going to use this one as opposed to the Dunkamatic. Um, and the reason why is I actually shortened the staff on this one. So this is the, uh, let me put this this way and over here like that. And this is the balance holder and I took the, uh, the, the tack for this one and I took off a lot more material that way when I put the balance down the balance can rest on this very nice comfy uh, pillow case pad made by whoever some mister pillow guy so <laughs> he probably didn't make that so first I put the screw the screw needs to go in the screw holder so this is so I never lose it so I made that on my lathe and I don't want to lose this, this screw for this watch ever so I did did it that way so I'm gonna see if I can lift this up without having to do too much effort here it's nice and let me just move this sideways usually I have the balance on the other side so, so there we go that's out and I'm just gonna very carefully rest this down finding the stupid hole is the hardest part of this whole job there it is so now when I rest that down as you can see there is zero pressure on that spring so that balance spring is just nicely resting there. The balance has fallen through that the uh, crack, and it's the balance is is really comfy sitting on that now. So I've got the comfiest balance and balance bridge is on here or balance cock. I like I hate saying that word because in North America it doesn't mean anything but bad stuff. So let's just call that the balance bridge from now on, and <clears throat> go for the forget the old British uh, balance cock thing. So <clears throat> there's the balance bridge and it's resting on there nicely. So lowering this this tack was perfect because it got this close enough so I can get this rested there. And I'll just move this out of the way because the work I'll do with the balance is later. Um, when I examine it, I'm going to take the spring off and you know, all sorts of things. So hopefully I don't have to remove the spring from the balance because I can wash it with the spring on. But I'm going to take the, the spring off of the bridge so I don't have that spring sitting there on the bridge. So... So I'm going to disassemble this just a bit, like completely. And let's start the uh, disassembly. Alright, one thing I want to do before I start disassembling the watch is actually put the parts in a watch holder, in a part holder. So, so I'm just going to throw these parts in. Um, and this just gets them out of the way so I don't have a, a future issue uh, with the parts being lost or 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 anything right i don't want an issue at all no issues is what i'm looking at so very carefully removing the hands and i'll put those kind of in its own little area because i don't want stuff to to touch or put any pressure on the hands and i grab the second hand by the pipe by its little tiny pipe I'm trying to anyway there we go and then i can put the um end up putting the movement in there but for now I'll just I like to rest the face inside of the uh, the movement the case actually so if I can rest this face inside of the case life will be good so 
So I like to do that to get it out of the way because I don't even want it to put it in there because I don't want this face to have any issues at all. So just throw that down like that and it'll just sit in there like this and I can even close this if I want because it's just sitting down. And so now I've got this face is out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. And then when I remove the parts from the watch, I'll line them all up, but I'll put them in here later so I don't have to worry about them getting lost. So, so far, notes to file. I'm missing a, um, I'm missing, let me just grab my little notebook here. And I think I'll just write a few notes down here. Okay, the first note, and you can note, you can use the notebook to make sure you, uh, so this is a Bori, Bori, and it's a bell watch, or ball watch, I said bell. So Bori, bell, so it's, so the dial foot, D-A-I-L, there's dyslexia, right? Let's put a little arrow here to switch these around. <laughs> So I put dial, D-A-I-L, D-A-I-L, dial, D-I-A-L. Anyway, dial foot. I told my wife that I might have dyslexia, and she said, uh, I think you probably have ADHD or OCD. Probably OCD is what I got. You guys can comment and figure out what it is. It's just got to get shit done, I call it. So there's dial, spelt wrong, foot. So I need to deal with that. Missing. S S I N G dial foot missing. Um, second thing is I had to basically it was loose, right? I'm gonna make sure I spell things right. So loose, loose movement. So upper jewels okay so far. And then I've got the um, the pallet fork resting between the things, so beat error should be good. B E A T error. Or should be okay, because I've got the fork resting between them. And then uh, what else was there? Oh, missing. I'm missing a the screw for the uh, missing dial foot screw. See, I spelled dial right at the timing. Screw. So we've just dove in, dove did, we just dove into this watch and we already have some notes here. But the bead air looks like it's good. The upper jewels look there like they're okay. The loose movement's not a good thing. I'll just put an X there. Dial foot's missing, that's an X. And the dial foot screw side, it's on the side. So it's just little tiny screws that was missing. So that's an X there. And let's just dig back in here and see what I got. So I'm just going to carefully uh, remove um, this plate first. Uh, make sure I've got the right screwdriver. And again, working really carefully. And there we go. Man, that jeweler, whoever cleaned this watch last time, he tightened these screws way too much. So they don't, they need to be snug. So they don't fall out, but they don't need the the uh, grip of death tightening because that's just way too much. And uh, buddy, there put the grip of death on these things because I'm <laughs> turning my butt off here, and it is not easy. So again, toothpick on the top. That way, when the when I move the screws around, I'm not causing any movement of the jewels in the top which could make the pivots actually move so get that like that and I should be able to lift the top of this off right straight up like so have a look down yeah we're all good I'll flip those around flip that around yeah, I'll leave it like this there we go I'm gonna move my screwdrivers out a bit here I don't need to be, them to be so close so and it looks pretty good. I don't need to take a photo of this. This is a pretty simple configuration here. So, so I want to take off the, uh, get rid of that plate as well, right? So just loosen the ratchets. Don't know whether this is backwards or not. Uh, it probably is. 
Uh, let me see. Loosey, tidy, tidy, loosey, goosey. No, actually, it went this way. So this was really loose. So not unlike the other ones, this this was super loose, which is probably not good. Trying not to hit the uh, hit this at all. I might try polishing the wheels on my new with my new polisher as well. To <clears throat> if there's any scratches there, I can get rid of some scratches with that and see if, see how that works. But what I'll do first is take an older movement and take the uh, the wheel off the older movement and then see if I can polish it that way. Um, but I need a piece of Rodico right now. So let me just smush my Rodico out. This is a relatively clean piece of Rodico, but it's the best way for removing the uh, this particular part is by Rodicoing it. Used to be the best way of doing it. There we go. So that's out with the Rodico. This does look really clean, so I don't really need to... I may need, not need to clean the watch, but but the jeweler said there was an issue with it, so I want to make sure I've dealt with that issue, whatever that is. Well, let me just undo this one here, too. Oh, God. This guy uh, really tightened this stuff down. not sure if that was a good idea, but he did. Uh, click spring should be fine. And the barrel, it seemed like the... I don't need to disassemble the barrel because it's already been cleaned and it's good as well. Um, but what I want to do is fix any major fault in this watch. And as I showed in the other video, there was uh, the amplitude wasn't as strong as it could be. It wasn't super bad, but it certainly wasn't over 300 and 360 degrees. So, uh, so it's good that I'm working on this to make sure I can maximize um, this amplitude and look at whatever problem this watch had. Oh my god, he tightened the crap out of this. It's probably the first problem he had. The, the probably a pretty decent jeweler, but he attacked this and tightened the crap out of it. So this screw looks like it's the same size. Uh, yes, I think it's the same size screw, same size head. As I've said in other videos, I always uh, look at the screw sizes just so I don't end up with uh, one of the screws being a little longer. And then when you reassemble the watch, you've got a, a problem with the screw size. I really don't like how tight these are. That's uh, unnecessary. So you can strip things in the nickel if you tighten them too much. Um, so. All this seems to be okay. He did clean this watch nicely, so it's a it's just a matter of finding out what the problem is that he couldn't deal with, he said. He was looking for a part. I don't know what this part was that he was looking for, but uh, I don't think there's a part that I can't actually find or make. So uh, let me look at the back end of this too. Yeah, this is pretty clean. I'll examine the jewels from the back as well because I looked at them from the top. Um, one thing I should have done before I did this was take out the uh, take out take out 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 is out in French. Take out the I'll leave that where it is. Take out the cannon pinion so I wouldn't have any cannon pinion issues. So I should just be able to slide the barrel out here sideways and usually you can take out a couple of the gears without having to you know you take them out backwards um not not that difficult just, just to get them out of the way seconds hand should be able to come out too you just have to be very careful don't force anything uh, just grab this sideways let's just get this stuff out of the way while i remove the cannon pinion uh, take this out and I'm gonna have a look at these gears because this is where he said there's the issue so it better be an issue <laughs> and let me have a look here let's flip this around here for a second and I'm just gonna take a quick picture in case I've there's something strange over here because I've as I've said before it all it looks clean though so I may not have to disassemble any more than that to have a look at it so and I think uh, my friend Bori was saying that uh, the watchmaker didn't charge him 
or something. What a nice guy. But he didn't fix the problem either. So, so there we go. Um, and again, I may not take the cannon pinion out if I can find that problem, right? But, but, what I'd like to do is lay some rotica over the top so the, uh, the winding mechanisms stay where they are. Because this watch is spanky clean. I don't think there's an issue here at all. He did say that the watchmaker cleaned the watch, so I don't need to run in and clean it again. So the whole thing might be a hairspring issue at the end of the day. So, so just lay a piece of rotic over the top. That way you don't have to worry about the uh, winding mechanisms coming apart. If I don't need to pull out the cannon pinion, that's fine. Won't do it. But I do want to put this under the microscope and have a look at what I got. So just rest this down on the uh, on the movement holder like this and have a look under the microscope and see if I can see anything. All right, so I've moved the movement over to the microscope here. Um, and I'm looking at the pivots here and these these pivots would be on the other side of the upper side of the of the balance, I think. Uh, actually, they're not. They're in the lower side of the balance. So I'm looking to see if there's any any problems at all with these pivots. Um, if I see anything at all, I may flip it into microscope uh, view. But right now, it's just barely, basically looking quickly at the. Uh, I can up lower the microscope and the stereo microscope like this, up and down. Plus, I have a ring light on the microscope, so I can in, change the intensity, and that allows me to get pretty darn close, as you saw in the other video, to each one of these jewels to make sure there's no issue in these jewels at all. Um, and so, and I can't see anything yet, which is nice. Um, and the watch has been cleaned because I can see some leftover clean oil on the uh, on the stem and and various parts of that movement. Um, I can also see a piece of bent metal. I'll show you that in a second, but that's kind of weird. Anyway, that's that looks good. So these jewel holes look impeccable, actually. So I'm looking for anything that would be out of the out of the ordinary with this. Um, and I've got a cap jewel here that looks pretty darn good as well. Uh, and that's that's cap jewel is for. What, where, what am I looking at here? There's the center. So that's the um, one, two, three, four, five. That'd be intermediate, maybe. Don't know. I'll have a look anyway. So there's a cap there, but this all looks clean as well. So I'm going to zoom in on that cap as well to make sure that there's, there's anything strange about this at all. And that's for that's for the pallet fork. So that's capped. I believe it's capped. Let me look at it sideways. Uh, is that capped? It's hard to tell. Yeah, that's capped and that's for the pallet fork. That looks pretty clean too. And the uh, cap, the, the, the jewel, the uh, cap itself looks like it's been taken off and on a few times because there's some witness marks on the cap as well that you can see. So um, I'll be nice to you guys and switch to uh, to the, mag mic the magnifying or the uh, take a lens out and have a look at that so you can see it. All right, that's the cap for the um, that's the cap for the cap jewel, and it's looking sort of through that cap jewel to see if there's any issues here. And I really don't see any issues at all. Um, it looks like there's oil there as well. So and and usually the pallet fork is not the issue in it flipping back and forth uh, to uh, to determine whether there's a like t when you're when you're passing strength from the mainspring on through everything to the pallet fork and it's snapping it's usually not a pivot on the pallet fork issue because it's so light apart that it never causes an issue so that's that part there so I'm looking through the um, this is a lower balance jewel so it looks okay, but what seems odd to me is that it actually looks like there's a piece of metal stuck in that jewel. So I might be wrong. It might be the cap on the other side. So I'm going to have to take that 
that cap off because um, it just looks sort of strange and, and I'm going to look at that a little closer to see if there's an issue so it's if I zoom in on this this is as close as I can zoom if I zoom out uh, like so you'll see that's the uh, doesn't help when you zoom out does it <laughs> it's a little little bright so um, anyway that's that's it, it there so I think I was wrong before I don't think they cap the cap uh, the the pallet fork. I'll have to have a look at that again because I think that was the cap for the lower uh, jewel for the uh, balance staff. Also I want to look at the balance, the lower balance staff to see if there's any issues with the lower balance staff. Like is it missing or is part of it broken off because that might, that would definitely cause an issue. So I'm going to investigate that a little further and see if there's a problem there. So again this is the upper plate uh, jewel hole. It's is, this is the uh, jewel for the escapement and I just noticed that it was a little bit gummy. I couldn't see that and then this jewel hole on the bottom looks like it might have an issue. So I'm looking at this jewel hole and it looks like it could be cracked. So I think this is maybe where the problem was. Where the watchmaker said I don't know what the hell to do here. Because that looks like some crazy stuff happening. And that might be the crack we're looking for, ladies and germs. So, in the investigative study of cracks, this could be it. I'm just going to touch that jewel with my toothpick. Or, it's not a toothpick, I'm using pegwood. So, I'm just going to touch that and see what happens, right? Oh yeah, there's the crack. So this jewel, and I can also see the field of setting moving just a bit. So to my friend Bori, there's the problem. Right there. You can see the crack. And I'll just see if I can focus in any better here. But uh, you can definitely see the crack on there. So that is not a good thing. And I'll try to get another shot of that in a different angle. So that's the problem right there. Uh, Alright, I'm being extra nice to you today. So um, this is my um, camera that I use in the stereo microscope. So if you can see that, it's a I think 5 megapixel camera. And it's got a fit in the lens here. So what I do is I there's a screw on the side and you remove, you loosen the screw up. It enables you to take the lens out like that. I do have a couple of high magnification lenses in these boxes here, which I've used before, gets me closer, times 20s. And you take this, but this will not fit in that, so you need an adapter. So the kit comes with two adapters. So I slide the adapter in first, like that. And then I slide the camera in, like this. And then this plugs into my computer USB port to be able to do this. And there's a brand carton uh, stereo microscope. And I'm able to go up and down for focus. And then when I zoom in, I do this to zoom in and zoom out. This is a very, very high-end microscope, so I get... Um, and, and also it looks a lot better when you just look through the lenses here than you do when, than it does when you're looking through this camera. So, sure, someday I'll be able to get a, you know, a higher quality camera because this didn't cost me a lot. So, the other thing is I just take one eye and I look through this way so I can see the part and align it with, with the uh, right-hand side, right? And that's, so that's when you're seeing that. That's what I'm doing. I'm aligning it this way, and then you're getting the view there. So that's my uh, setup there for the carton uh, microscope, and it's all good. So I just thought I'd show you that. All right, before my hand moves again, there's a picture of the cracked jewel in the center, right? So this is a uh, pretty cracked <laughs> I'd say not sure how to describe it but that's the cracked jewel and I think what happened was that the jeweler that saw this said how the hell am I going to replace this jewel because it's burnished in and it's in a gold setting which is a really nice high-end setting so this is something that uh, I will attack so this is the jewel from the other side let me see if I can get a a good visual of this one. Just hang on a second while I just move my stuff around. Hit the old camera and let me just see if I can get a view from the other side. There's a view from the other side. So so you can see how that jewel is cracked. That's nasty. So that's uh, 
it's let me get my toothpick in here and we see up down left right I'm trying always trying to organize the uh, this thing here there we go get a little bit of light on that um, there and you can see the crack on up down left right up down left right up over away there's the crack right there so and the other side is just smushed and there's another crack on the other side as well so so there's a crack jewel that needs to be replaced that's why this watch was not operating properly because it has a nasty crack jewel I'm going to look at the pivot for that because that jewel is actually uh, part of the intermediate wheel so it's a jewel for the intermediate wheel so I'm going to look at the upper pivot of the intermediate wheel to see if it's not uh, if it's okay or not damaged because I may have to burnish that as well to smooth out the metal on that particular wheel um, and I'll show you how to do that as well so one thing you want to absolutely do before you continue with uh, repairing this is make sure that you're fixing the right problem so get my upper camera here well you can see most of it right there on the upper camera but make sure you're fixing the right problem um, and that is to say that you know you got to make sure that the right jewel is being addressed here so this I'll look again but I'm but I'm pretty sure which jewel it is um, and it is this one right here so I'll just have a quick look again at that to make sure that I'm not stupid and yeah that's the cracked jewel right there so and just take a marker and you're working on the inside of the plate so you don't have to worry and just put a mark like that um, on the inside just to make sure you don't fix the wrong jewel <laughs> that would be a disaster so just a hint there because uh, as you turn the plates around and stuff you can get confused in which way they go so that's the jewel that needs to be pushed out and replaced so I have the um, intermediate wheel here so which is one two third wheel I always count from the barrel in and I'm looking at the pivot on the uh, on the intermediate wheel here and I can see that it, it sort of looks okay but I think I will burnish the pivot on that as well um, and I can do that one of two ways I can put that in my lathe or I can put that in my J-cut tool to burnish that pivot um, might be a little easier in the J-cut tool if that's if it's going to rest in the uh, J-cut nicely um, instead of having to take the lathe out to do this because it looks okay but the jewel can wear the metal out just a little bit so I'll end up doing that as well so I need to I'll just write J cut the, the part and then I need to replace uh, the jewel that's in the setting so that's a tricky job but they, it's a it's a tricky job but I uh, should be able to do that so you got to do it otherwise the watch is useless it's not a good pocket watch anymore unless that jewel is replaced. So I gotta be super careful because it's burnished in but it doesn't look like there's much rim on the burnish so so there's my problem it's a broken and that is the that's the intermediate wheel so it's the third wheel broken third wheel jewel and I'll just put intermediate intermediate wheel wheel so that's a, a big X that's the major problem with this whole thing with this watch um, I'll uh, also look at the uh, balance and the escapement after I've replaced that to make sure there's no problem there so that's why the jeweler couldn't do anything with that because if you're just your basic jeweler I'm um, sure you can buy things and replace things and stuff but uh, try to find a gold setting uh, with a jewel in it for a vintage pocket watch good luck so I'm going to tackle this problem and be very very careful uh, when I do this so here we go so now I also want to make sure that I have everything out of the way because I don't I don't want to have this this problem uh, all I need is the plate I'll put everything out of the way I'll deal with burnishing this uh, jewel later so I think I should put my glasses on here because I can't see a damn thing without them so so <clears throat> so I need to get everything out of the way um, and just so I don't uh, mistakenly 
again lean on a part or lean on something or whatever because even though you think you're fine um, you can actually destroy a part quite easily by by leaning on it with your arm so you need to get all that stuff out of the way so and I just group the gears up here so that they're the tough ones are with the tough ones so I don't have to worry about the the gears actually having a problem right so let me grab this but my hand oh like that and just put that in keep that away from the uh, put nice side up keep it away from the hands um, and then I've got the uh, these here which are the screws for the uh, ratchet in the crown is that the right name the jobby do hickey and the thingamajobby the thingamajobby do hickey so this is going to be a, a challenging little issue but uh, nothing I can't do <laughs> So I'm just going to put this movement in the middle, have a look at it, so I didn't bother taking out the cannon pinion, and just lay it over here actually on the side. It's not lit resting on the hands at all. Um, and then this is all get out of the way stuff, get it out of the way. I'm okay with the balance being over here, although I'll put, a, put something on that later so it doesn't cause an issue. Um, and I'll leave the uh, crystal I think I'll leave the crystal where it is. Do I want to put this crystal in here too? I think I do. There we go. You just rest the crystal down here like that. <clears throat> so I'll put the crystal away. So I've got the watch case here. I don't need to worry about that being in the way, but I'll rest it on a nice piece of cloth here. And I'll put that next to the movement and or the balance. And I'll just move this out of the way because I don't need this at the moment. And what I need to do is get my jeweling tools out so to push this out so i clean my space up which i recommend highly recommend and that way when you take your take out your seats jeweling tools i've got two of these by the way i got it the, the high-end one as well but i locked that one up i don't need that one i'll probably need that maybe um take out the jeweling tool and i need to measure the pusher size right you know what size pusher i need for this job um, and just move this part inside and there's the there's the piece there so I want to take this boot first so unscrew that and then push that out and then work with the jewel and the and the, um, the and the movement that's in or the setting that's in first I may want to have lunch uh, but before lunch <laughs> but before lunch I think I want to take this out so there's the jewel there, so I can remove the setting and see how that's put in there. See how well that's put in there? I may need a different screwdriver. Let me grab the black one here. And I definitely got to get in a little closer on this one. So you see my wonderful hairstyle is kind of not a hairstyle. It's kind of a lack of hairstyle. Uh, and that's it there. And I'm probably going to hit the camera with this. The screwdriver is too wide. I don't want to screw with this, so I get the right size screwdriver here Go over my world's best screwdriver things. I think actually one right, right here, the yellow one maybe, right? So I'm going to get this out of the way a bit. Move this this way a bit. And it's just to get my head out of the way. And then uh, refocus. Always focusing. So I, don't, I know the automatic focus cameras are easy, but they're shitty, so... I need some pressure on the plate so let's just bring this over here and put that down like that get a little bit of pressure on that plate for unscrewing the, uh, that, that uh, beautiful setting so it's a uh, I probably should go down a bit and not do it like this I mean uh, I think I'm a little bit too close too close let me just get my Alrighty then, so just remove these screws here from the I keep saying this but the camera gets in the way like doing this on camera is very difficult so 
So you get, Bori's going to get extra, I'm going to give him the film, or the, the film, <laughs> I give him the file for the YouTube video. Uh, it's pretty cool to have that. But you got to understand that it takes a lot of work to make these particular videos. Particular videos. I should sell them for five million bucks a piece for movies, per movie. So I'm putting those screws way out of the way so I don't have to deal with that. So the screws are now out, oot. So that setting, theoretically, if the screws were on the top, then the sh setting should fall out the other way. So um, I should just be able to push this setting out with a... Uh, I don't want to scratch the top, so I'm just going to see if I can see how big this is and see if I can ease that setting out somehow. Here we go. So that's now out. Oot! <clears throat> and I can put this way out of the way. So there's my jewel. There's my jewel in the gold setting. and the cracked jewel in the gold setting. So that cracked jewel pushes out downward. So which means I've got to get it set up to push it downward um, with my seats jeweling tool. But I don't want to starve to death. So the first thing I'm going to do is go have a bite to eat. It looks like somebody's been playing with this a bit too. So, But that's the guilty jewel, man. The guilty jewel right there. What a great lunch. <laughs> Eggs. Anyway, I got the land of um, stumps and pushers here. <clears throat> so I got to get a... Uh, I'm going to push this jewel out through one of these so I gotta make sure I have the right size it's not too big not too small just the size of Montreal I think that's the way the saying goes these are flat pushers here um, I need a, the right stump size though uh, if I don't have a stump then what I can do is use my handy dandy jeweling tool here <coughs> which I've used before to push out a jewel so here it is here and then it's a matter of lining this up properly which is probably a better thing to do and this these sort of the jewel kind of fits in here nicely so you just pick the right hole and see if that fits if it's too small it's going to warp the setting so you don't want it to be too small so I check it from all edges to make sure I don't warp the setting um, and if it's too big, then it's just not going to work. So, somewhere between the two. This one's a little shaky, but this one looks like it's just a bit too small. So I don't want to push down on this setting at an angle and potentially warp the edge of the setting, right? And this is a burnished in jewel setting, which is tougher. But So, and I can measure the next jewel um, by, because this jewel will crack in a million pieces once I've pushed this through. Uh, I don't think it'll stay in, in situ, in place. It'll just crack up. Uh, <clears throat> there's a couple of blank ones here that I can also use here, like this one here, uh, which just you can just push it through this way. And again, make sure that, that you have enough uh, edge of the setting over that hole, and you've got enough space in there to get through there. So I may use this one here. Um, I might, may or may not need to use this to clamp it down. Um, it's just, I'll have to get in close and have a look at that, uh, and then see what happens. So there it is there, <coughs> sitting in there, and I'll just clamp that thing down and get it all prepped up. So I pick the right hole, and then pick the right size, and this might be adequate here to get the pusher through. And I also have to pick the right pusher. So, <coughs> I don't know what size this is, maybe it's a 125 pusher. And you can just go over to the, the setting itself and then put the pusher in and make sure it clears <coughs> the setting and it's just pushing on the jewel itself. So that's the 125 and I know this jewel will get destroyed when it goes through so I'm not too concerned. I just have to go find another jewel and make sure it's you know thick enough or thin enough so that it doesn't so it fits in the burnishing area. So so I need to push this jewel through. So let me set all that up. 
So I did find the right recessed hole to fit this into. And then I have to make sure that the pusher is right. And I have, let me just zoom in a bit here for you. And I have the right pusher, I believe. If you have a pusher that's too wide, it's going to touch the inside rim of the gold setting. And I didn't want that. So I pushed, I picked a pusher that's just a bit smaller than that. And it's 115, looks like it's the right size. So I will try that. So I have to tighten this down and get it set up by tightening down the center post first to get it closer. And then once I get the center post closer, I tighten down the end post here, which will uh, basically drive, tilt that forward and tighten that jewel in the setting. And this is what it looks like tightened down. And I didn't don't tighten it down too much because you just need to hold it in place. You don't need to squish it in place. So you just have it there just lightly tightened down. And then um, you just have to need to look at this pusher to make sure the pusher is you know appropriately uh, you know in the right place so I could use a um, to make sure I hit the center I could use a, a uh, pump pusher which has the center in it and and use that but I think the flat pusher should do so let's go ahead and set this one up all right a little bit of an issue um, my pusher when I put the pusher in here it won't clear this here for for um, keeping it in and I know that if I pick a bigger one of these then I won't be able to hold the setting in place so I may have to do this without having this in place so just have this out of the way and push down there is a rim on this so the rim will keep the jewel in place so not as concerned with that so I can probably move this out of the way and push straight down with the pusher so Change plans. You gotta always be ready to adapt. We look in here. It looks like it is the right pusher because it's clearing the edges, which I was concerned with. So I don't want to have that to have an issue. So I just have to put the the, uh, the pusher in here. Let's do this here. Now, if I did like a million jewel settings a, a week, this would go a lot faster, probably, but. I don't, so stop yelling at me. And I want to make sure this goes down far enough uh, when I push this down. So I'm going to wheel this um, all the way down as far as I can. I don't need to worry about the depth because the depth will be gauged by the jewel when I put it in place and being able to have it deep enough to burnish, to have it burnished. So I do need to open the setting even after I push this out I do need to open it up so let me see if I can get down low enough here low how low can you go now I'm just gonna do a test here and just put a different just put it down with a different thing here just to see how far down it goes and yeah it goes down far enough so now all I need to do I got everything set up now I just need to very carefully lower this over that jewel and center that like so and then I need to push that out so which is tricky but doable I don't think I want to pre open that setting before I push that out because that sometimes you can do that but I don't think this is needed here need to make sure everything is kosher here we go so that push that out and you can see the jewel setting stuck on the end here so this is absolutely the right size I just flicked it off let me gather my wounded here and the jewel should have pushed right through Let's see if it's in there no it's not there so if I look down on the mat here there should be a jewel somewhere where, oh where, has my little jewel gone? It should be a jewel. Yeah, I'm going to look closer, I guess. There's no way there's not a jewel. Because I was pushed out nicely. There's the jewel setting without the jewel in it. And where's that camera? There it is. There's the jewel setting without the jewel in it. 
So somewhere down here there's a jewel. Now that the only place this could go is straight down, straight through the jeweling tool and onto the mat. So am I blind or did this thing shatter into a jillion parts and I can't see it? Let me go see if I can find this jewel. So there's the jewel and the open setting. Uh, the lucky part here is that the jewel did not crack into a million pieces. Usually when you push these through, they're, uh, they're cracked enough that they're, uh, they're cracked into a million pieces. And I know it's the right jewel. I checked four times. So let me look down again. Yeah, this is cracked for sure. Um, and I'll take a photo of it as well. Just so I can... Uh, I'll show Bori what this looks like with a photo. And... <clears throat> get my little camera stand there. Over the top. Where is that jewel? Where is that jewel? It's right there. And I'll center that and then see if I can zoom in with a camera with my iPhone and just take a picture of it so I have it on record what that jewel looks like. Uh, I just need to do that and then zoom in like so and then go click. There is the jewel. Press in the center like this. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. I need it to focus for me. It focus enough anyway. Enough. Enough. Now I could go on over to the uh, stereo microscope deal with it there but I want to replace this jewel. I'm a busy guy. I am a busy guy. There's a nice photo. That's the jewel and the jewel hole. Or the jewel and the jewel setting. So the good news here is when I go search for another jewel I will be able to measure the hole and try to find the jewel with the perfect hole size. And <coughs> I'll fit that at any rate. There we go. That's the perfect picture. I'll show you what this looks like. So there it is there. That's the jewel cracked, as you can see. Um, and the settings on the side. And I need to open that setting once I find the... Well, I find it. i got to burnish it open. Burnish it open? Yeah, burnish it open. And then fit another jewel that's the same size in there. And I'm good. I'm good to go. I'll burnish it back in. All right. Now I got to measure the uh, jewel hole size. So there's a few ways you can do this. Um, I think my preferred method is actually measuring the pivot. So I've got my uh, seats jeweling jewel hole size tool. I'm missing a jewel in this, and I know it was me that did it. So which pisses me off. But but I want to find out the size of the pivot on the end. So I just need to fit this this gear into one of these holes to find out what size this pivot is. So it's not too bad a job, but I do need to get up a little bit close on this. So you just need to ride it along until you find the right size. Hopefully it's not 28. It's more like 32 or something like that, right? So, and for 40 something, right? It's, uh, but I will have to get up a little closer. So there's a 44. It looks like it's not too bad. And just use my puffer here to see. I just keep that puffer away from the existing jewel. See if I got some action there. And yeah, that might be a little too loose. So I can go down to a 38 maybe and see what that does. Is that going to fit in there? Now I'd get normally get a lot closer, but I'm trying to keep this on camera. So. The 38 is a fit too. It looks like it's in there. Yeah, so let me go down even lower, go to a 34. And it looks like it's a, a little tighter by the way it's spinning. It's probably a 28 where the jewel is, where I have the thing here. So let me go to a 30. Oh my god, I think a 30 fits too. No, say it, say it ain't so. Let's move it sideways, you know that it's in there. So, better not be a 28. I'll do a 26. 
if the 26 doesn't fit, then it's got to be a 28. So let's pull that out and then put in a 26. Guess what? I think it's a 28. No, it's not fitting in that hole. And it is fitting in the 30. So I'm going to want it to say somewhere between 28 and 30. What's going on here? There we go. So that's it there. Um, I'll look at this a little closer to make sure I'm not... Uh, I'm not having any end play issues. Yeah, that looks like it fits nicely. So 28 and side shake here. Doesn't seem like there is any. So maybe, what is that? That's not a 28, that's a 30. So 30 looks like it might be right. And just to be sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, so a 30, that's the, the whole size. Um, I'm going to take my pin gauge, right, and I'm going to take a 30 pin gauge, which I have here, and this is, 30 is 0 0.30 millimeters, so I'm going to go down to the end here, and there's a 30 pin gauge right there. That's a 30 pin gauge, and what I can do here is, can I stand that pin gauge up? Yeah, I can. Just throw that pin gauge down into a hole, like that. See? See that? You're learning stuff today. And then I can grab... I don't want to be arrogant here. You probably know stuff already. I apologize. I hate arrogant people. Anyway, you take the pin, the jewel now, very carefully, and I use a piece of Rodico. In this case, I don't care if it's dirty or not. And this jewel is slightly rounded and it's slightly domed for oiling. So. And I just want to put this jewel onto this pin gauge like it would be on a pivot. I might screw this up the first time, but and I did. Just hang on. I grab the jewel again, and I want to put it on the right the right way on the pin gauge. So I and I screwed up again. I could use tweezers, but I don't want to squish the jewel. And I don't want to break the jewel for sure. So I just want to take this jewel and be able to place it on there without any major problems. So try again. This is watch work is try, try, try again until you, until you succeed. Uh, I think I got this Rodico on the wrong side here. And I split the jewel. Damn it. Damn it. So that jewel was barely together. I was hoping to be able to do that. So so I didn't. I wasn't able to do it. And the jewel split on me. So rats. But not a big problem because I will pick a jewel. And I have to make sure the jewel fits properly on the wheel anyway. So, so it's not life or death. But it would have been nice if I just was able to put that on the pin gauge. And not have, have this split apart on me. So... Yeah, it looks like it's split on me. Might be enough of the side of the jewel here for me to determine. I'm going to stick the side. I'm going to zoom in on my craziness here. There we go. This is my craziness right now. Is that zoomed in now? Zoom, zoom, zoom. I kept saying I zoomed in, but I also need to focus, so... Yeah, I split the jewel here, which is which kind of sucks, but it happens. It happens. So what I really wanted to do was just put the old jewel on top, but it had nothing. It was so broken that just putting it there nice and lightly caused it to crack. So, so there I've got the jewel. Now half of the jewel is sitting there. I just want to put this down here for a second. Yeah, so it's somewhere between a 28 and a 30, so it might be a 28. So what I'll do is go, I need to go jewel hunting now to find a 28. And the other thing I need to do is take my setting, and I need to take this setting and throw it. I'm going to take the jewel, the old jewel, 
I don't need to have anymore actually, but I'm just going to throw the leftover in, inside the watch, this watch case over here. And just use my right glasses here. I got glasses that are split lensed, so the bottom half is, or th times three, and the top half is just 1.5 for reading. So there's the, um, I need to open up the setting a bit on that so I can drop the jewel in. But I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do here. Um, it would have been opened a bit when I uh, when I set it, but but I'm gonna see if I have a 30 uh, 30 in the, the right size here for a jewel and Put my gauges away because that would have been nice if that actually worked so And the only one I'm missing is a, is a 30 now. I have another jewel gauge. I could get that out, but I'm lazy and don't want to do it I thought it was actually in my wall unit somewhere, but these things are hard to find. These jewel gauges cost around 300 bucks. And they're not easy, they're not cheap, but they're absolutely necessary when you're making a new balance staff. So I'm just get all the metal out of the way. I don't need this. There's I had some amazing idea of measuring the pivot end here with this this gauge here, but this is way too the pivot's way too small. For this gauge to even be close so i would have had to bring out some other some other gauge but it's really not needed because uh, all you need to do is drop the jewel on the top and make sure the damn thing fits there you go drop the jewel on the top and make sure the damn thing fits how do you like that now let me put the wheel back on here because i'm going to be using this later so i'll just put that right there so the wheel is now sitting nicely on the block and i'll use that a bit later now looking at the setting really closely, and it doesn't look like it looks like it opened up because I think the goal that was holding it is very light. So this could be tricky putting that jewel back in place and making sure the burnishing keeps it down. So I'll do what I can do, man. I'll do what I can do. But I gotta clean up that hole a bit just to make sure that there's no leftover uh, stuff from the pushing the jewel out. So which there shouldn't be but just clean it up with a little bit of Rodico and I'm gonna go hunting for the right jewel size now so as you can see I got a few jewels here now the center ones are actually empty um, but the other ones I think the center ones are empty the other ones are all full and I have another case as well that has jewels in it that's slightly smaller but but uh, these are all have jewels that have been used so and I'm looking for a 30 and I'm not really sure of how how what the width of that jewel is so when I go through this this particular effort um, I've got to just zoom or focus in here a bit is this focused? yeah that's focused what's happening is this isn't focused it's actually too bright I think there we go so there's the jewels here now like I said these ones here are empty and I bought this uh, from somebody a long time ago. Um, and these ones here are all filled, and they're all filled here. Plus I have another case or container that's full of jewels. Plus I have more jewels that are actually coming in the mail uh, right now. Um, and I have a whole bunch of jewels in settings, but not gold, nice gold settings like that. So I'm going to have to find the right jewel to put that put in there. So, And this jewel would be a 30... 28 or 30 right so it's going to be somewhere in there and the size yeah I don't know uh, 24 28 that's a 24 so I'm looking for like a 30 this is a 3110 so that jewel there's three jewels in there that might work so I'll take that out and have a look at that um, 32 is too big uh, and I'll rest the jewel on there so I'm looking for Probably I gotta have the 30 part in there because it has to be the right size. There's a 3120, um, and hopefully there's a jewel in there. Yeah, there's three of them in there, and I need there's a 3100, and there's a 3200. I don't think it's a 200. I think that's way too big. Yeah, that's way too big. Just looking at it, I can tell. And there's a 3180. And that's way too big as well. You can kind of just tell by by uh, looking at the jewel itself. So I'm thinking it's probably around. Um, either a, there's a 28 150, 
and that might be right I'll check that one out and what else do I have here this is called Jill hunting by the way in case you're curious what that is what I'm doing right now 24 on 20 so 28 it's probably a 28 darn it 28 and it's one of these I don't believe it's one of these so um, so I believe it's one of these because these ones here are for a different reason those are bounce olive holes so these are for the bounce itself right so and <clears throat> clear my throat so I'm gonna look at those right now and see if I've managed to hit pay dirt so I'm gonna try a 28 150 here drop a couple jewels down here and see if this actually fits over the uh, pivot to start off with and then <clears throat> if it fits over the pivot then does it fit into the hole so and it gives, just gives me a, an, an early indication whether I'm wrong or hunting wrong or what. And i got to grab this properly because I'm having issues today. Probably had too much for lunch, I think. So that doesn't look like it goes easily into the hole. So... Grab that again and put that down. Oh yeah, that doesn't fit. So 28. That's a 28, I believe. And let me let me get the uh, let me get the setting up here too for a second and have a look at whether it fits into the setting. I'm gonna turn it the right way. That was a 28 something. So just for the heck of it, throw it into the setting. And it does look like it has a chance of fitting in the setting. There it is sitting in the setting. Yeah, that's not bad. So that was a 28. We get the cork. 28150. So so maybe a 3150 is the right size, right? So put this, these jewels back in their, in their home because they, they're not fitting on here. Let me try that one again. Now it looks like it wants to fit, but no, that doesn't fit at all. So, and you can't put it in and then force it to fit. So 20, Eight is not the right size. 150 looks like it might be the right size for uh, for this. So that's a this is a no. So 28, no. So 30. So I need a 30. 150. So these are 3100s. So those will just fall right through. So 3150 is what I'm looking for. Now, did I pull any 150s out of here? No, they're all 120s and 110s. What was I thinking? Yeah, these are way too small, so 3150 is what I'm looking for. All right, I've got a 3150 and a 32150, so today is my lucky day, I think. I didn't think I'd actually find a 3150. So let me just throw this in here again. So there's a 3150. So I'm going to see if this fits. Let's dump these jewels right here. There's two of them there. Um, pick the prettiest one. <laughs> yeah, these are... A little bit of olive on the top. Yeah, they're properly done. So there's a 3150 jewel. It's a gorgeous jewel. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. So that is perfect. And um, 28 didn't fit, 30 fit. So 3150. Now I just have to see if that fits on the. Um, I'll just do a close up so you can see that beautiful jewel here that's on top there. Flip, flip this around and then just do a little bit of a close-up and there you can see that jewel sitting there nicely see I never know which way to move the, the part so there's the jewel sitting there nicely and you can check for end shake on this just by touching the jewel and looking down on it or side shake I meant not end shake so as you can see there's really no side shake at all there so that's going down there really nicely into that, into that pivot. So it's all good, man. So that's the right one. 
that's perfect. Um, so let's just see if I can install this. All right, there we have the jewel and the setting. So you know, all I do is drop that in and make sure it's the right size. So I got the olive part, I guess, is down. So the flat part, I guess the olive part is sticking in the upward part of the jewel setting. And the flat part is in the bottom. So the flat part is the part that's touching the actual uh, the actual pivot or the back of it. So, so just put that in like that and then push it down a bit. And that looks like it's friggin perfect. So that's really nice. It's really nice in there. So now I've got to burnish that in. So I gotta be really careful when I do this because uh, I'm not sure how much metal is left to actually push that down. So, but that looks like a pretty good fit there. So I just need to burnish that in place and and uh, and that's a whole other job staying on. All right, let's continue with the saga. So did all the work, found the problem, cracked jewel on the um, intermediate wheel here. I showed you how you fit a jewel on. I said I had the right jewel, but I didn't have the right jewel. So. When I put the jewel in the setting, it was slightly loose. And that means when the uh, watch is put together, even if I'm able to burnish material over that jewel, it's going to end up being a bit loose. So I said I needed a uh, 3050. In fact, I needed a 3060. So I had the wrong jewel. I just saw some screws, screws on my bench here that I better put back because I'm going to lose them. So uh, screws for the setting. Um, anyway, I had the wrong jewel. Uh, so that's no good and I need to get the right jewel so I'm going to uh, I do have some jewels coming dans la mail so in the mail um, this I left this jewel in here this was one of my uh, gajillion jewels but the problem with the jewel is it's not beveled properly so I think it's time for a diagram I'll just explain this very quickly and show you what I mean by this okay so let me get the old diagramming out again I tell you, my wife loves when I draw diagrams. She just loves it. Full of crap. So, I'm going to try to diagram it right here. So, I'm going to look down while I'm diagramming, so don't complain, okay? So, the jewel setting, there's the plate, like this. And the other side of the plate, let's make it really big, like that. And then the jewel setting, um, it sits in here, and it goes in... Um, it goes in downward so so the jewel setting would be kind of like this and then it would be like this I'm trying to draw this properly and then it would go down like this a bit and stop right about there and just draw this on the other side like this up and it's kind of sort of at an angle because it's a gold jewel setting and it goes down and then it goes down like that and then there's a little tiny lip just a bit of a lip like this and then it contours out at a bit of an angle like that so I just made the angle a little more extreme than it would be and that's looking at the jewel setting sideways and so so when you put the jewel in the jewel I put in the, the jewel that was in there was actually contoured to fit here let me move this lip out just a bit more because that lip goes like that so it kind of stops the jewel, but the jewel has to go in like this. So if the jewel is square, and I'll just make a square jewel right here, it stops right here like that, and it doesn't ride down far enough. And the jewel I currently have from my multitude of non-seized jewels that I bought a while ago, the whole size is correct, which is a 30. The, uh, the diameter is good to sit in here, and there's a little bit of rim that you have to burnish over the top. You just move this like that. And that's gold there. And that's really, really thin. And I may have to do something about that as well. As well. Like cut deeper and make a bigger, a bigger flap for it to go over. Um, but for now, this is, this is what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm looking for, the 150 jewel, the 3150 did fit in here. But there was too much, it was short. So it fit like this, like that, and like this, but basically 
the jewel it was nice but there was too much of a gap so I had a gap if I just paint my jewel here you'll see so there's my jewel on one side and there's my jewel on the other side like that like this and these are the flaps that have to go over the top of it and there was too much of a gap right here so this was there was a gap right there so see if I can write sideways G A P and not the clothing store okay not the clothing store too much of a gap there and that was a 3150 so when I did all the gazintas, it turns out that my my end result needs to be a 30. I'm writing, I'm driving sideways here. 31, 30, 30, 30, 30 slash, slash, 160 is a perfect size to fit in there, and it has to have a bit of a bevel, so the the jewel can't be flat. The jewel has to go like this I'm drawing it big and then bevel inward and then like this and then the jewel hole jewel hole like that and then and then bevel like this and like that that's what that's what the jewel needs to look like and to conform to the setting now I was thinking way outside the box here and I was thinking is there a way I can take the this the flat jewel that seems to be wide uh, thick enough and just grind the bevel on it. And I just couldn't figure out how to do the micro grinding of the bevel on that jewel without getting the right jewel. I have flattened the jewel. I have lowered, I've actually lowered a jewel so it's not as thick so it fits in, but I've never taken an edge off a jewel like that, a beveling. And I'm not sure exactly how I do that. So that's my challenge. So I need a 3160 jewel. I had everything but. I had a 32 170 that was too too wide for the hole here um, I could widen the hole but I don't want to have to do that so I'm going to be on the hunt for 3160 I do have a three flasks of jewels coming from the UK next week um, and they're loaded with jewels so there's a let me show you a photo here I have lots lots and lots of jewels the problem is I didn't have that jewel so there's my flasks so I got these coming from the UK and these have got tons of jewels in them so I may be able to find the right one to fit into here when I go hunting with this set of jewel jewels and they should be in next week so so I'm going to call this part one and um, and I know what the problem is which is good I've taken the jewel out I've fitted it I know what size I need I need a 3160 worst case scenario is I just go to some of my guys and order a 3160 and say hey my hat crooked again. Why am I always doing this? There we go. Hat crooked. Fix that hat, soldier. Anyway, so, so, so I gotta, I gotta um, find that jewel and away we go. So I'm gonna make this video now. It's probably gonna be really friggin' long. I apologize, but there's a lot of material in it. So I did find the problem on the watch, which is great. Um, but I'm gonna have a look at the balance as well and, and make sure that that's all good and make sure that 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 end stone, the balance, uh, the lower the lower jewel for the balance uh, doesn't have a pivot in it, which I thought it looked like it had a pivot in it, but I'm not sure how that could happen. So the, the whole pivot breaking off and the balance would swing with the pallet fork. So it's probably just the looking through the hole and then seeing the cap jewel on the other side and, and looking like it's a piece of metal when it's not. So anyway, we'll uh, get into that after I fix this little jewel problem. We'll count this part one part one there's your entertainment for the weekend uh, don't forget to to subscribe to my channel if you want to talk to me or send me a note there's my or is it there at JD watch service at gmail.com I am a hobbyist um, uh, please don't this is dangerous so please don't do this at home right now anyway I'm a hobbyist I do this for fun uh, I, have a, I have a day job so this is a long weekend, so I'm able to do a little bit of watch work, and I've got another watch I want to work on tomorrow. Um, so I'll I'll get on that tomorrow, and um, and I think I got to wait till next week uh, rather than modifying that uh, that setting. I really don't want to modify that beautiful gold setting. I just want to get it done properly. So thanks for watching, and tune in for the next video, please. Subscribe and tell your friends.